I am your host, Jody Cohen, and I'm so honored to be joined today by Lloyd Burrell, who is on a mission to raise awareness about the dangers of electromagnetic fields from cell phones and similar devices and share solutions, which is the most important part. He is the creator of the EMF Health Summit, the Healing with Vibration Summit, and the author of the EMF Practical Guide. And one thing that most people don't know is that EMFs can impact our autonomic nervous system and our ability to drop into the parasympathetic state. So welcome, Lloyd. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Jody. It's a pleasure. Could you start off, just if people don't really understand what EMFs are and how they affect you, could you just share your story and how you got into this, please? Yeah, so um, it was, I always say EMFs found me. I didn't go looking for EMFs. So one day I had a reaction to my cell phone. So like everybody, this is 2002. So everybody didn't have a cell phone then. I'd only been using it about five years. And it was just really bizarre. I didn't quite know what was going on initially. And it went from this uh, bizarre to unpleasant to just unbearable uh, sensation within a few short calls, people calling me because I was running a rental business. And um, so lots, lots of symptoms, all kinds of different symptoms as kind of immediate symptoms and like medium term symptoms and long term symptoms. But because people say, well, you know, how did you know it was cell phone? Well, because I was in so much pain, you know, yeah. I got the cell phone next to my ear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got the, the hot head. Uh, I got the hot ear. Uh, I got the prickly uh, skin, tingling skin, and that's like in the face. And all this evolved over time. And I've told this story many, many times. And often to doctors, and I say laughingly, it got so bad, I actually went to see my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the doctor couldn't do anything. And he sent me to other specialists, and they really didn't have a clue uh, what was going on. And it's put me on this course because. Um, not only was it the cell phone I was reacting to, I started to react to everything, everything electrical, started to yeah, react to my High computer. electromagnetic sensitivity. Just, yeah, but this was at a time when nobody was talking about this. So I didn't, nobody was, nobody said to me, oh, you've got electromagnetic sensitivity because it was just unknown. So 2002 is like prehistoric, you know, times. Uh, and I was, yeah, cell phone, uh, computer, TV, radio in the car, even a corded landline, and my life became a living hell, basically. Um, and I'm smiling when I say this, but it wasn't funny at the time. No. And it lasted about 10 years. It took me about 10 years to really figure it out. And that's where I am today. I've, I can honestly say I've figured this out. And, um, and this is what I talk about, the dangers, but very importantly, the solutions. And that's what I'd like to share with the people that are listening and talk about some of the science as well. And can we talk about, because I know um, I've heard a, a, another range of symptoms, like from fatigue to um, ringing in the ears sometimes to nosebleeds. Could you just, it, for the listeners who might not be as electric magnetically sensitive, but are still suffering, could you, could you share some of the things they might be experiencing? Well, yeah. So uh, the, the kind of ex uh, symptoms typically are the kind of experiences that I was experiencing initially so it's this hot head if you're using a cell phone because it's not just cell phones obviously it's lots of devices uh, that can do this um, but uh, the hot head is pretty classic the burning sensation around the ear and then over time these symptoms evolve and um, neurological symptoms and so what we mean by that is headaches headaches are a big one massive fatigue i was suffering from massive fatigue like go to bed sleep 12 hours get up just feel knackered all the time all the time um, and and then it just, it's kind of the weakest link thing with these EMFs because they impact, mm. as far as I can see, and I've really spent a lot of time researching this, every uh, tissue, organ, bodily function we have. And they go for your weakest link. So whatever yeah. that might be, that They're is opportunistic. What the symptoms. They yes. are opportunistic, yes. Yeah, and the other symptoms that I, I've had was kind of racing heart and um, prickly skin. Yeah, so arrhythmias, tachycardies, uh, that's all documented. Uh, I wrote a whole book on this, just came out um, at the end of last year, which is censored, of course, uh, because all this information, particularly with 5G, um, the powers that be, when I say powers that be, I mean, honestly, our government, I mean, this is a whole other topic, but our government's in cahoots with um, Google, Amazon, Facebook to keep this all like so nobody knows about it and make out that people like me. I was crazy in some way. Literally, I thought I was crazy when this happened because there is, was no information back then just because 
there was no information out there particularly and uh, the internet's not what it is today but the, today there is information but it's really difficult to find uh, information on this and understand what's going on and and even the science uh, really to understand the science yeah, no, which is one of the reasons I'm so grateful that you're here and speaking out on it. I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit to how EMFs can impact our autonomic nervous system uh, and especially throw us out of kind of the parasympathetic state. Yeah, so EMFs impact us in so many ways. Um, and, you know, one of the things people say, oh, yeah, but there's no science on this. And honestly, there is so much science. It's just, that, again, it's not talked about and it is, um, it is, it is kept under the, under the rug, so to speak. And uh, if so, just firstly, if people want to read about the science, then by initiative report 2007, which brought together over 2000 peer reviewed studies, subsequently reviewed in 2012, they reviewed another 1800 studies in the intervening period between 2007 2012 1800 so that gives you an idea of just how quickly this is evolving and how many studies are taking place despite the fact it's really difficult to get funding for a lot of the researchers um, that are doing because it's obviously it's not the cell phone industry that are yeah. funding the something although they are and trying to get the studies to say certain things like emfs are safe but um there is actually not a phenomenal amount of research on this whole autonomic uh, question, autonomic uh, parasympathetic uh, question, which we're talking about. You know, as I said, just before we started, I wrote a whole book on this with like 500 scientific reference. Uh, yeah, uh, over 500 scientific references. And I barely talked about the autonomic nervous system and this aspect of it. And it's not because it's not important. It's just because there's so many different ways that uh, EMFs impact our health. Um, so for people listening uh, today, then how, you know, how do EMFs impact our autonomic, you know, so just very briefly, you know, what is this autonomic nervous system doing? Well, it's actually really, really important. It's like going on in the background and it's, um, it's what takes care of, you know, digestion, respiration, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, all these vital bodily functions we just take for granted and it's doing all this and we're just like getting on with our lives. And um, so there's two aspects to it, as you know. There's the um, sympathetic uh, nervous system and the parasympathetic. And the problem is uh, that the uh, EMFs are impacting this parasympathetic mode. So the, we need both the sympathetic yeah. and the parasympathetic, paras the sympathetic for the fight it's, it's or flight. It's stressful. Survival. So it, it keeps us in the sympathetic state and doesn't allow us to shift into parasympathetic. Well, there's, yeah, it, it, it does. It, it is, uh, so very simply, we can say uh, it's a stressor. Um, so what um, the uh, EMFs actually impact our vagus nerve. So we know this, yes. we've got some, well, some science on this. Uh, the, the vagus nerve is like super important. So it's connected to basically every organ uh, in your chest area. It's this really important nerve. And what we know, uh, what the science is telling us, the studies on this, that EMFs uh, dysregulate this, uh, actually Russian studies uh, tell us that, that uh, radio frequency, microwave radiation, dysregulates this uh, vagus nerve. Uh, so that's uh, the, the, the first aspect. Uh, also it impacts glucose metabolism. This, we've got um, studies on yes. that. And this important for regulation of the vagus nerve uh, also. Uh, structural alterations in the synapses of the vagus nerve. So like just the basic structure of the vagus nerve is actually impacted again by these electromagnetic fields. And just to be clear what I mean by, you know, cause it sounds a bit vague, but yeah, your cell phone, uh, your Wi-Fi, your, uh, your smart meter perhaps, uh, and lots of other devices in your home because I would like put money on it that most of the devices in your home or many, let's say many of the devices in your home, the people that are listening, watching, many of the dev these devices are smart devices. And what that means is they emit radio frequency radiation all the time. We don't even know all it. All the time. And so we have these EMFs, this radio frequency radiation is, a, is one category of electromagnetic field. And this is one of the aspects that it's impacting uh, is in, in, in so many ways. Uh, we got a study out of uh, Seoul uh, in Korea that it changes the central nervous system cells uh, and induces cell ap aptosis. Uh, you 
shaking your head so maybe you know about that one too no i and you know i our mutual friends they work with the sickest of the sick and that's the first thing they do they find that if they cannot give people a ferritin cage and kind of a sleep sanctuary that's emf free people will not heal because this it's is just this is right and they're obviously ahead of the game and not many uh, doctors uh, not many clinics are doing this so really uh, in short what we can say is that these EMFs, these devices which we're using, which we're taking for granted, which we're not taking, even given a second thought, and I can talk more, you know, to give you more detail about what these EMFs, because it's not just the, the wireless, which I've been talking about, the Wi-Fi, the cell phones, and the smart, and so on. It's, it's also the smart wired. devices, it's no, everything. It's, it's all that, but it's wired also. And this is a lot of people, experts that are talking about EMFs, they're not talking about wired. And this has been overlooked. So actually your electrical wiring in your home is emitting also different forms of electromagnetic fields, three forms actually, just your electrical wiring, electric fields, magnetic fields, and dirty electricity, which are these kind of in between frequencies between the low level 60 hertz you're in the us i'm in france 50 hertz we've got so 50 cycles a second for me 60 cycles a second on your electricity what electrical wiring and this dirty electricity which there's not uh that much science on it but the science that there is is really frightening because it's being done on children how it's impacting children uh so these we've got these other frequencies which are in, in our homes which we call dirty electricity uh which are impacting our health and all this what i'm saying is that all this is impacting our autonomic nervous system, preventing um, for us from going into this parasympathetic state, which is so important for health. Um, you know, preventing our bodies from like when we sleep even, you know, EMS impact us uh, when we sleep. Which, and, which is uh, really when we're supposed to be healing. And if our cells are in this when we're alarm healing. state, we can't heal. Exactly. And this is, for me, this is major. This is major. And uh, so people are, you know, we're all like living in these homes, wonderful homes with all these luxuries and everything. And our bodies are not able to uh, go into this parasympathetic state because you're either in one or the other. Or to not, you're either yeah. in sympathetic or uh, so you're in one or the other. Okay. Yeah. You can't, you can't be in both at the same time. <laughs> you can't be in both at the same time. Okay. And uh, we're, you're, our bodies have been prevented from going to this parasympathetic mode. Um, and notably, uh, there's a lot of research on uh, how it inhibits uh, the production of melatonin, which is super important. Uh, so it's master hormone uh, cre created by the penal gland, yeah. mainly when you sleep, not only when you sleep, but mainly when you sleep. Um, yes. and it's, it's, just, it's also made in the gut and it's important for detoxification. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Into, right. So it creates this chronic stress response, quite simply, when we're exposed to these EMFs, which are keeping you in this sympathetic mode when you should be in parasympathetic mode. It's a driver for inflammation. EMFs are a driver. All these gadgets, all these electrical wiring, all these things that we're using, all these things which are rather marvelous and wonderful, it's all a driver. Cumulatively, it's all a driver for inflammation and what I call dis-ease. I don't really like the term disease. I like to say dis-ease. I say your body is no longer at ease and in harmony with you know, the planet, the universe, and this wonderful world that we live in, and you know, which we need to be uh, connected to. That's what we should be connected to, not connected to our cell phones and all these uh, other devices. And, and also, the vagus nerve, one really important uh, point I want to make is the vagus nerve is there to quench inflammation. Yeah. And when we're zapped by EMFs, then it cannot do its job. So there's just so many reasons why it is, you know, the EMFs uh, are really important for this talk that we're having today. And, you know, every, I was thinking, you know, wow, I mean, EMFs are relevant to every single aspect. So for Absolutely. instance, detox, you can't detox if you're being zapped by EMFs, or you can, but really difficult. As you said, other people that are ahead of the game that's what they're doing first get rid of the emfs mitigate the emfs then your body can detox emotions and mood we know that emfs cause anxiety and uh, depression uh, the studies on this people living near cell towers are you know subject way more subject to uh, anxiety and depression because than because of the increased inflammation in the brain because of the increased inflammation in the brain, brain and other factors also, uh, yeah. pain and inflammation. So it's a, this driver for inflammation, uh, which I talked about. You know, immunity and gut health. You know, uh, EMFs yeah. contribute to leaky gut, and this is where the, the 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 gut is the seat of our immune system. So that's really uh, major. Uh, stress and energy. 
Uh, well, I was just saying, you know, we've got the, the blood glucose thing. We know it impacts that. We know it impacts our blood. We've got study. We can do live blood samples on uh, studies on that. We can actually see that real time, how it impacts our blood. When we sit in front of a computer, you know, EMFs are impact, impacting our blood, even without any RFs, even without any wireless. You know, most people have got wireless too. And brain health, obviously, uh, you know, what one of the little statistics I like to cite is the Interphone study, 2010, 30 minutes a day on your cell phone increases your chance of getting a brain tumor by 40%. <laughs> and with COVID, all of our kids are on their devices all day long, which is why I'm so grateful that you have some solutions to share. Could, could you talk about what people can do? Because I'm sure they're very aware of the issue now and, and concerned. How can they help? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope. That, yeah. So um, and there's m- way more to the issue than that, obviously. But that's really a very quick summary. And what's relevant. When you have an the, entire summit, too, that they can access. I have an entire summit on this. Yeah, where we talk about this uh, for hours on end, <laughs> all the aspects of this. Uh, yeah. But yeah, in terms of solutions, and obviously there are many, many solutions. But the first thing I... I like to share is really, I like to talk about cell phones, uh, talk about solutions for cell phones. I don't like talking about cell phones much, but solutions for cell phones. Because, so my number one recommendation, I always put this out there and people will say, yeah, Lloyd, uh, you, we can't do that. So my number one recommendation is, you know, just don't use a cell phone. I know it sounds hard, but believe me, uh, when you've experienced what I've experienced, when you look at the research, and this is coming out every day, we've got studies coming out every day on this. Um, we're talking about, um, you know, cancer, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, you know, right. you name it, the, the, it's there. The, so uh, it's not cast iron proven, uh, but there is a very, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really the a very convincing body of evidence, okay, uh, what, behind this. So what do you think of the, like the case of the Pong case and the kind of um, shielding cases? Are they worth it? Right. or? Well, so uh, there's various things you can do, and that is one of them, um, using uh, these specific cases, yeah. So Pong case, uh, which I have tested as a cross case also. Um, don't use just any case, because if you're using a regular case, that can actually make it worse because it smothers the signal. And the more you smother the signal, the more it, it harder it is for your cell phone to work. So the thing to remember with all these frequencies Ooh, I've is- I've never heard this... that, that's helpful. Well, yeah, because if you're, for instance, if you're in a car, that is one of the worst places you can use a cell phone because it's a bit like a Faraday cage. So it can get out only through the windows, maybe, you know, it depends what kind of glass you've got, you know, um, and that, so whatever makes your cell phone work more, uh, you have less bars and you literally your cell phone can ramp up the radiation like more than a million times. So this technology is incredibly sophisticated. And obviously, honestly, bravo to the engineers that are doing a really great job in serving the public. But obviously, then people are not looking, uh, cell phone companies are not openly looking at uh, the health effects because they are looking secretly and trying you know, to make um, safer. Clinton, Clinton passed the Telecommunications Act. Uh, and basically, there's a clause that you can't even talk about the health consequences. We uh, there cannot... Was, there was a cell tower that was going to be built in front of our house and we fought it and we defeated it using other techniques, but we weren't even allowed exactly. to bring up health. So, uh, yeah, the Cell Phone Act 1996, that's correct. Uh, we're not allowed, you cannot, uh, you cannot require that a cell phone be dismantled on health grounds, which is kind of You're not even allowed to mention strange, it. If you, but if you, uh, you are allowed it. to say it's, oh. it, it's unsightly. And that you could get it taken down for that reason if you get enough people behind it's, you. It's unsightly, it. and there were other areas that they could. I mean, it was crazy. It was a very expensive case, but we won. Yeah, so it is possible. And then and, they put a 5G uh, everywhere, so it didn't matter. Well, no, well, no. So let's not be defeatist, and really, okay. uh, because it's a cum- that's that's you know, it is an important point to make here from your comment is EMFs are cumulative, and w- the point that you just made is like what a lot of people are thinking. So thank you for making that. It doesn't matter. We got the cell phone tower down. It doesn't matter about getting rid of the Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi, because this neighbor's got Wi-Fi. Not true. Distance is your friend. All these, uh, all these so it's like the, um, the Wi-Fi, which is near you, is way worse, which is you know, your own Wi-Fi, usually, uh, is way worse than the Wi-Fi, which is you know, the neighbor's Wi-Fi or whatever. And the, you know, so it's cumulative. So the more sources there are, because you know you can't feel it but your body can your cells can yes. um, and it impacts our cells obviously and it's what it's doing to many many different uh, impacting our cells in many many different ways uh, so distance is your friend 
uh, don't use, avoid using a cell phone. My number one recommendation, which nobody will listen to, well, very few people. Uh, but so how can we use a cell phone safely? Yes, these cases. No, not just any old, old case because it does smother it. Um, using airplane mode as much as possible, being really careful. So that is kind of a blanket term, but being really careful that you uh, take off uh, wireless, all wireless connectivity. So that means cellular uh, connectivity. Uh, that means Wi-Fi and that means Bluetooth and possibly GPS as well. Is it, does that sound complicated? Yeah, it is a bit really. They don't make it easy. This should be just to be a button, you know, a proper button. So airplane mode uh, needs to be your friend um, and uh, distance is your friend also. Right. So it's, all, it, it's about using your cell phone. If you are using it, keeping it as far away as possible. So that's why Espe I keep saying Especially during is your sleep. Friend. Like I, I have always heard like at least six feet from your head when you're sleeping. You know, I'd love to say six feet, you're safe. And this is one of the uh, things, again, with um, that I hear and makes me squeam a little bit is people squirm, sorry, is that people are saying, do this and you're safe. Do that and you're safe. That we can never say we're safe because as we're talking about at the beginning, so I'm, uh, so I do talk about science, but uh, I f really feel these uh, EMFs and I don't get the debilitating symptoms, but I don't just feel EMFs. I feel all kinds of energies. I'm very sensitive to energies. Uh, so how can we say that at six feet it's safe? It's not. It's not. So we're picking, you know, these frequencies are going around the earth. It's safer. But honestly, you, the safest thing to do is to switch the thing off, put it in a metal tin, like a biscuit tin. Uh, you know, these metal tins, uh, which you buy for something, you buy biscuits or whatever, or coffee or whatever in it. A and compost you, bin, yeah. Metal tin, it's free. Uh, you can buy ones as well. I call it a kill tin. Um, and that's the safest thing to do with a cell phone. And again, back to distance is your friend. What does that mean? It means, yes, speakerphone is safer than this. And it also means using an air tube headset. Or using a headset, an SYB cell, they shield your body. And I, I particularly like what they do because they test everything they do. And it's actually uh, Martin Blank, PhD's son, who's behind this. Um, and they test really uh, very thoroughly uh, all the devices. And they actually have a little gadget which you can put onto any, connect with any wired headset. And it makes What, what it do you think of those safe. earbuds? Like those scare me. Those little AirPods that they, the uh, Apple AirPods that all the kids right. wear. So all these devices, so that's, yeah. So I'm glad you raised that. So all these devices are using usually Bluetooth. Yeah. And when we say Bluetooth, what do we mean? Radio frequency microwave radiation. Okay. It's radiation. Microwave. Yeah. Like your microwave oven. In fact, exactly like your microwave oven. Same frequency, 2.4 gigahertz. So very bad news. So uh, we're putting, uh, you're putting a device which emits 2.4 gigahertz pulsed radiation, okay, which our bodies are not, not evolved to live harmoniously with. You're putting that right next to your brain. How can that be safe? <laughs> so all these devices, all these Bluetooth devices um, are to be avoided, but particularly all these Bluetooth headsets, pods, whatever you want to call them, anything which you're putting in close proximity to your brain which is, uh, you know, 70% water or more, um, which, you know, what happens when you put anything, if you put something in a, wire, in a microwave, it's got no water content, it won't do anything. If you put something with water content in it, it heats it. And this is what you're doing. It heats it. We've got the thermal effect and uh, so on. And these, uh, but lots and lots of adverse biological effects before you get the, uh, this thermal effect. So that's really where I, I like to just share that firstly, on the cell phone and I could go on there's more tips on cell phone and more advanced tips but that in a in a nutshell is it that's terrific and then what other advice like I've heard um, moving your bed uh, away from the wall so you don't get the dirty electricity using um, like a Christmas light timer to turn off your Wi-Fi at night what, what else do you recommend exactly so yeah absolutely so uh, the the Wi-Fi tip that's an absolute no-brainer because who needs Wi-Fi at night I mean come on you sleeping? Why mm -hmm. would you have the Wi-Fi on? You just have the Wi-Fi on because you never thought to switch it off. But once you begin to think about the thousands of studies, the brain tumors, the cancer, uh, the Alzheimer's probably later on, you know, so many people are getting Alzheimer's and these diseases, which were unheard of even 20 years ago. Um, is it all EMFs? No, obviously not. It's EMFs plus all these other toxins. It's, it's a perfect storm, but they're a it's piece a of the puzzle. It's a perfect storm. 
Yeah. The, for me, they're a significant piece of the puzzle because it's, EMFs are what I call a super toxin, or perhaps, yeah. perhaps even the mother of all toxins. And that's to say, you get all these to- you're all exposed to all these toxins, these chemicals, and these uh, in the air and the, uh, they're, they're the food we eat, and, so and EMFs on. the flame that ignites exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. And we've got this synergistic effect when we introduce and it goes boom. Yeah. yeah. It just explodes. Um, so yeah, the Wi-Fi having it on a mechanical timer costs something like $10 from Amazon. Um, so it switches off like at night or, you know, whatever those night hours are, you know, midnight to 6 a.m. when you can absolutely be sure that you're not That's using what we do. your Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cheap and it's easy. Why do I say that? You know, as opposed to um, as opposed to like going, because you could go into the settings and actually uh, there's a timer in the settings, which you can do this on most uh, modem routers now. Um, but the problem is as soon as you get an, up, an, an update, then it tends to revert back. So safest thing is that little timer. And then in, with regard to your bedroom, so, you know, the bedroom's really, really important um, because sleep is just not just something you do to kill time at night, you know, till we got some daylight and you can actually go out and do what you want to do. It's like when your body- Sleep is the most important thing to your health and you need a sleep sanctuary. You need a sleep sanctuary. You need this sleep sanctuary. And uh, really EMF, this is where EMF hygiene. So I always say, you know, don't obsess about EMFs, but if you are going to obsess anywhere, obsess about it in the bedroom. Yes. And um, so you don't want a cell phone anywhere near your bedroom. Uh, like I said, you know, in that kill tin, way down the corridor, you know, kick it outside even, you know, <laughs> don't do that, but somebody might pinch it, but uh, yeah. you do not want it anywhere near where you're sleeping. Nowhere near. Okay, so well, how do I do, you know, what do I do to wake up in the morning? You get a little alarm clock, a little battery alarm clock, you know, that, that I will allow. <laughs> but anything, really, honestly, anything electrical in your bedroom is a no-no. And that includes electricity in your wiring. And uh, one thing that I, so I like to lay down the gauntlet uh, so to speak, is to ask people to go to their breaker box and switch off the electrical electrical power for your bedroom circuit. Uh, when you do this, you will have uh, less magnetic fields, electric fields, dirty electricity. I was going to say zero. We can't guarantee that because the way electricity works, sometimes we get an imbalance and actually even if you switch off in your bedroom, we still have uh, some residual on there. Uh, but I, you know, the important thing uh, here is to listen to your body. So listen to, perhaps listen to what I'm saying and other people are saying, but above all, listen to your body. So when you do this, does it work or does it not work? And if you find after one night, two nights, well, I can't sleep at all, then that, uh, that's the time to call in an electrician and get this figured out what's going on because that shouldn't be the case. Um, but, um, Otherwise, you give it the week. And honestly, after one night or two nights, uh, you know, many, many people are reporting to me uh, that they're sleeping like a baby uh, yeah. because we are eliminating essentially this magnetic field, electric field, and this dirty electricity really easy, easily. Um, and that's a seven-day test. And once you've done the test, the next step is to... Uh, install a device which does this automatically and there's various uh, companies which are doing this now and this is kind of a a bit of a growth industry and it's a good one I like this and um, so it's just uh, either it's doing it automatically or you've got a little button you can do it I live in France we have a company in Germany that uh, called Gigahertz Solutions so if people from Europe are are watching this contact Gigahertz Solutions they have a a device that does it automatically so I go to bed switch all the lights out and there is no electricity on my wiring it cuts it automatically it's rather wonderful but it doesn't work in the us unfortunately um so that is really an ideal and then when i switch the electricity on it comes back on again it it, uh, activates the circuit because what's happening with everybody else who doesn't have this who doesn't have a device and if we can't even just unplugging things you know like the toaster the blender all the things that you're not using unplugging things but the problem is um You've got, you know, most people have a bed and behind the bed, they have a light switch. And in that light switch is uh, electrical wiring, obviously running to that right. light switch. And so you have there, you and this, you know, according to the Institute of Building Biology, this per- permeates out into the room between six to eight feet. That's what they say with their meters. But mm-hmm. as, a, as I say, I say it goes out further than that. So you do not want this uh, at all. So that's why it's important to look at this aspect and, Honestly, this is with a cell phone. Honestly, the three go hand in hand. You know, the cell phone, the Wi-Fi, 
and this bedroom work, if you can do that, then your parasympathetic uh, mode, uh, you know, your, your, your autonomic nervous system is going to have a field day and just go into. Right. Well, and also in, in the US, mode. we have these smart meters that emit things too, but you can get a little cage. It's less than $100 to just put on it. So it kind of limits the um, radiation. You can. And so what I always, uh, so I have a, like a, um, a protocol for dealing with EMFs and I call it the OM. And I like saying OM, it's this, uh, because it's um, kind of this. Which is a good word. frequency. It's a sound it's frequency. It's a great frequency, but the actual OM actually means on you for understand. And that's what we're doing here. That's why we're talking about this, to understand all this, to understand all these frequencies, these gigahertz, these hertz, and these dirty electricity and all these terms. That's what you're beginning to, you're beginning to understand. The second thing is to measure. At some point you need to measure. Because, you know, you're gonna, you can ask experts on what, you know, how dangerous is this and how dangerous is that. But a, a true expert is actually, he's not going to say, like, just well, and about this, things this off the top of his head. Point. He's going he's to come in with a meter. He's going to measure. And that's so what a, you a need to do. A building biologist is what so they would use. It can be a building biologist. It doesn't have to be. Honestly, there is some, I love the Institute of Building Biology. I love the work they're doing. Uh, but there is some really great uh, EMF consultants out there, which are not building biologists. Um, Geo, um, uh, there's another one, uh, Patrick van der Burr, uh, which is, uh, I think it's Geo Biology. Geo Biology. I forget the term anyway. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me, Patrick. Um, but um, there are, yeah. So building biologists is a reference. Absolutely. Word of mouth, failing that. Um, and, uh, but even then, you know, it's not like an either or situation. You can get the EMF expert in, but I still say, have your own meter because everything you bring into your home. And I do this, everything I bring into my home, I'm testing it. In fact, I test it before I bring it in and I'll try and buy locally and I go to the shop and, uh, you know, I like go just before the closing when I'm not going to disturb everybody and uh, like they unplug everything and I test because if there's like uh, the cordless phone and cell phones and everything loads of people it won't work I can't it just there's too much going on to get a clean reading and we unplug plug and see if that thing is actually generating uh, you know because unfortunately we can't rely on manufacturers to shit they're not obliged legally obliged to give this information about uh, devices about uh, radio frequency radiation uh, depends what country you're in but generally they're not obliged and so this is a this is a sure way of knowing is to actually measure. And the third uh, part of the OM, so understand, measure, in, and mitigate. Um, and that's what I shared with you, some tips on how to mitigate with the Wi-Fi, which is the mechanical timer in the bedroom and so on. And there's so many ways to mitigate. There's three ways, basically, broadly. Uh, the first thing is to turn off that thing, whatever it is. You know, I said to you, well, just turn the cell phone off. The second thing is to increase the distance. So we're back to thinking, uh, distance is your friend. And the third thing, last but not least, and this is actually the always last resort in my book, is to shield. And so you've got people, there's like two categories of people. There are people that are yeah, just there, like you can not shield interested with paint, in EMFs. You can shield with um, window filters. And I want to yeah. actually add a fourth one, which mm -hmm. is to um, raise your own frequency. And uh, you can do that with essential oils. You can do that with walking in nature that has the Schumann resonance. I find Shungite, uh, a crystal that you can buy on Amazon for nothing, that helps to kind of mitigate. So just low hanging fruit things. Absolutely, yeah. So Shanghai is a great, um, I've got some Shanghai here. Yeah. Um, and um, this is like supercharged Shanghai because it's wrapped in, um, it's wrapped in silver. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can use, but, um, and really it's about reconnecting with nature and this, yeah, it's very, you know, essential oils, nature. You know, it's nature yes. in condensed form. Uh, there's so many things, the grounding uh, in terms of inflammation. So, you know, inflammation is a biggie. Obviously, so many people, uh, like 60% of Americans have got inflammation. Uh, grounding uh, in one to two seconds, you're actually uh, reducing inflammation. Yeah, um, so take a walk without your cell phone. You don't need to give it up. But take a take walk without your cell phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I did. As I said, before I came on, I took a walk without my cell phone. Don't yeah. have cell phone. Uh, but so many ways, yeah, as you say, uh, raising your vibration is another aspect and uh, which is super important and connecting with nature, absolutely. And dig, uh, it's like a, a disconnect, reconnect. Yes. Disconnect with all this EMF, all these technology and all these gadgets and reconnect with what's essential. And that is yes. the beauty of nature. Yes, this was so helpful. Is there anything that you wanted to add that we didn't touch on? So the only thing I would say uh, lastly, really, which is important, um, and thank you for asking, is children. I want to, you know, just um, 
because that's the reason I started talking about this is because uh, I realized how dangerous it was. I'm a father and my kids were young at the time. And then I read the studies on how children are more vulnerable to these yes. uh, devices, uh, to these frequencies, to electromagnetic fields than adults. So children are not just little people, like their immune systems aren't formed, their bodies yeah. aren't formed, well, they their, have their less, skull. their skulls are smaller, thinner, um, and they're not, they're, so they're way in, in, in short, they're way more vulnerable to these frequencies. Children should not use a cell phone, people. Uh, children should not be using tablets, like, you know, uh, and laptops on laps and things like that. Shouldn't be using tablets. I know they do. They're giving them out in schools, like schools which think they're ahead of the game and, yeah. you know, really, smart uh, yeah, smart schools. Um, but it's not. It's really bad news. So, yeah. um, and there's, that's obviously uh, another big, big topic, topic but very uh, briefly, yeah, children, don't give your kids a cell phone, please. Um, and don't, you know, Wi-Fi is a no-no. Look where that, if you do have a, a, a modem router in your home, you don't want it anywhere near your kid's bedroom. And I know you have a lot of uh, free information. Where can people find more about you and more tools? Yeah, so electricsense.com. Um, sense is written S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, as in common sense. Um, and uh, there's just literally thousands of articles on there. <laughs> it's grown and grown and grown. Um, bi-monthly interviews, uh, podcasts, um, all about EMFs and health. It's all about EMFs um, and um, free, lots of free information, um, free report. Um, honestly, if you want to delve into this topic, that's the place to go. Um, and just uh, don't be overwhelmed by it uh, because there is a lot to take in. And um, just, you know, just kind of come and go and, and one step at a time. Well, this, and as you uh, pointed out, it's additive and cumulative. So anything you can clear off your plate is really great. This absolutely. this was amazing. Thank you for everything you do. Thank it was you, a Judy. privilege to be here with you. Thank you.